Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, my name is Tiffany Meng and I'm going to be doing a gouache tutorial uh, painting a Richard Schmidt painting. Um, so in a second you'll be able to see the painting come to life. I love this painting so much because I just love the slightly muted palette. I love how simple it is but how powerful the painting is. And so when I first saw this painting I fell in love with it and I thought why not? I'm going to try to do a tutorial. So I say, I don't say master study because when I do this, I'm not trying to get it to look exactly like this painting. It'd probably take a lot longer than uh, me painting, I don't know, an hour or so. Um, this video is 45 minutes, so let's dig in and I hope you enjoy. Alright, so I'm going to first start off by doing a quick sketch. I'm just using a uh, regular felt tip pen. I actually really like the pink because when I put a little bit of water on it, it um, has this really nice sort of pinkish warm hue to it, which is nice to show underneath your paint. Um, so I don't spend too long on the sketch. I am kind of sketching at an angle right now so the camera so you can see it better. So I, and proportions might be a little bit off. I think I noticed after I finished the painting the house the houses don't look exactly like the original. Um, but it's not like I don't know how to draw houses. It's just you know at a slight angle right now. As you can see I'm just really trying to get the rough gesture um, of the composition of the painting. You know, the horizon is set pretty high. I'm just roughing out where the sheep are right now, although I think I'm going to paint over that completely. Roughing out the foliage, and now I'm going to prepare to start. Just, that's just reinforcing some lines now. Don't want to overdo it, because you don't really want your lines to show in the painting. So of course I'm taking my one inch flat brush and I'm just going to coat the whole thing in burnt sienna with pretty with a lot of water. You don't want it to be super super watery of course but just enough so that when you put the first layer on the paint will really nicely seep through. So I'm going to spend too much time coating. I'm just going to start blocking in the rough shapes. So you can see the biggest shape I see right now, the biggest area is the green pastures. So with that I'm mixing, I know you can't really see my palette, I'm going to move it soon, but I'm mixing a little bit brilliant green and yellow ochre. Now there's many ways you can do this, um, you know you can mix your own green with blue and yellow. I I, I just adopted brilliant green into my palette um, and I, I mean I don't know if it's cheating by not mixing green but I like to use it for um, a lot of different kinds of palette. So I can see now I'm actually already starting to paint pretty dry because I'm trying to get that texture that you see in the original painting. He has a lot of um, really nice gritty texture and of course that painting is an oil painting so I think you can get those textures a lot easier by gessoing your canvas, you know, using a palette knife which I don't have here. And gouache is going to be a little bit less thick and a little bit more watery of course because it's water based. So you're not going to get those exact textures. But as you can see now, I'm just really trying to be loose. I'm not focusing on detail right now. And I'm just trying to carry over the color that I see um, from the green into the trees behind the left house. Now I know these colors aren't exact, but I'm gonna keep layering and layering my gouache and my paints um, until I get those nice balances of um, warmer greens versus cooler grays, cooler greens and some grays here and there. I'm just adding um, a little bit of darks right now, but I'm going to save the darkest darks for later. I really just want to get the overall uh, color blocks in right now and cover the whole painting. So I'm going to start painting that misty background. Now really misty soft edges like this are always tricky. Um, and usually what I would probably do is use a little bit more water, but I'm not doing that right now to really get that, those nice bleeds. But I think I want this overall painting to be pretty thick. I always end up piling my paint on pretty thick in the end anyways, even if I start off thin. So I'm going to just kind of get those nice, subtle, soft gradients. You see there I'm using a little bit more water. I'm really trying to turn it towards the camera. This is a really awkward angle for me to paint. I'm going to switch it soon. Just trying to get those, you know, the, that gradient from darker to lighter. And I know I'm going to go back and fix this. It's never really perfect on the first try. 
um, like I've said in my um, past tutorials, if you watch some of my tutorials of foundation um, arts, um, I always say gouache dries darker than when you initially put it on. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm just adding a little bit of a lighter, lighter texture on the bottom. And again, I'm really not trying to put too much detail. I'm using a lot of white because gouache dries darker. And I'm just really, really drying out my brush right now, not using too much water. I'm trying to get some reds in. So I'm mixing some brilliant green and some alizarin crimson just to get a kind of nice, more grayish green. Not so vibrant. This whole palette is pretty muted, which I really love. Now, if I were to go back, I would actually mix this green with Spectrum Purple and Lemon Yellow. But unfortunately, I didn't have those colors when painting this, and I just got them recently. So you should definitely try those colors out. Now, a mistake, I'm going to let you know that I really wish I, you know, was a little bit more careful was um, there is some warms in the roof that are so beautiful, and I wish I just left the undertone where I coated it with burnt sienna first, but I think here already I covered it too much. And towards the latter part of my painting, I'm really desperately trying to save it by adding thicker, you know, orange paint on top, but it really doesn't look the same as keeping that underpainting. So tip I really recommend is, you know, never feel the need to, you know, cover your whole painting with color after you tone it. Um, with your burnt sienna or yellow ochre after you tone it with that warm undertone. Really let some parts seep through. And of course here, you know, I'm always constantly thinking about value, you know. The background is slightly lighter, which I'm going to have to adjust as I can already see. Um, you know, obviously the house on the left is so starkly, you know, a white, almost white. That's going to pop. That's going to be the lightest value. And, and the houses and the barn, and the smaller barn on the right side, they kind of blend in um, with, the, with the pasture and a little bit of the sky. So you always want to keep in mind, you know, value structure. Um, your painting is not going to hold up if you don't have a good value structure. So how you can practice this is, you know, by sketching, by black and white, you know, sketching, 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 along with painting. Um, color will not save a painting with poor value, so you want to keep that in mind. So I'm really painting those rooftops. In the original painting, I really love how that roof is just this purple. So I'm mixing some sky blue with their lizard and crimson and white um, to get that sort of, you know, nice cool purple. And I don't think I touched that roof afterwards. Sometimes I just put on a stroke. And I just leave it. I like the boldness of the stroke, and I really try not to overwork all my strokes in a painting. You have to be confident enough to sometimes, you know, put down a stroke and decide that you like it and not go back and think that you have to rework everything. That's definitely not the case all the time. So this barn here, it's pretty, pretty subdued, pretty in the background, you know, pretty kind of one value. And of course, the side of the barn is a darker value, so I'm just going to block that in really quick. Using some of the same, the same values there. Again, at this point in the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes, um, it's really not focusing on detail and really blocking in the whole painting. I'm working on the painting holistically. I'm not really um, um, fine-tuning or honing into one area. Um, and then going to the next area, and then going to the next area. I think it's very important to make sure you see the painting as a whole. So you can see now it still looks really rough, but I'm starting to see how things are coming along, how I need to adjust my values in relation to others. And I know at this point there's a lot of darks that I haven't added yet. So you can see here I'm already trying to lighten the sky, I'm probably going to have to go back many, many times. You want to have a lot of white on you, I'm going to say again, because gouache dry is a lot darker. And I apologize for my really messy palette. This is kind of how I like to paint. Um, and um, I don't know, it just helps me. I like it when my colors aren't so fruity and cheesy and fresh. Like They sort of have a nice muddiness to them. Um, and gouache doesn't really doesn't mix on the palette so you can get really nice color still even when you have layers of color underneath so 
So right now I'm just starting to add some nuances in the pasture. Even in the original painting, nothing is really defined in the pasture. Um, but right now I'm just kind of, or the field, I guess I should say field. Um, and I'm just trying to fine tune the houses. I'm still using my one inch flat brush. I don't think I even switched to a smaller brush. I just used this brush and the round brush throughout the painting. So I'm just using the edge of my brush to really define the, you know, the flat side of my brush to really define some edges even more. Cut out some shapes. You can see I'm really not, I'm really putting down confident strokes. I'm not really, you know, like rushing over it again and again. And I think that's something important to practice, not just with gouache, but with any medium. So I'm going to go ahead and paint um, the white house there, white house, <laughs> the lighter house. Now for the lighter house, um, I am mixing a lot of white with linden green and a little bit of um, permanent yellow deep, but mostly a lot of white. And you'll find that even when you add a lot of white, it's still going to dry darker. So um, you really just have to keep adjusting. I can already see my roof is blending into the foliage, so I'm going to need to add some darks to the foliage later. You can see now I'm just trying to, to find some of the darker edges of the roof. Now with houses it's tricky and I always, uh, I haven't really figured it out completely painting in houses, especially in plain air because for me, you know, when when I find that when I'm painting structural things, when I um, paint too much detail, it almost looks forced. So it's really finding that fine balance between hinting at the window, it's hinting at the shadows beneath the roof, um, and not actually, you know, like um, painting it so detailedly. So here I'm just adding a little bit more reds to balance off those greens. So remember, red and green are complements. So you're really going to have that nice vibrancy. But it's again, they're both not vibrant colors. Um, I'm really mixing, really kind of making a gray, those grays to balance out those brighter patches um, in the in the field. And by mixing those grays, I'm not mixing with black and white. No way. I'm mixing by complements. I'm mixing with greens and reds. So you can see now, I'm trying to define my roof even more. I'm going back, trying to mix some white with burnt sienna to start defining, you know, the um, the faces of the roof. And I struggle. I, I know I, I know I'm going to repaint this many many times until until it comes out like I want it to. Um, and that's okay. You know, sometimes you know you don't get it on the first try, you don't get it on the second try, you don't get it on the third try. And gouache is very forgiving that way. So you can layer and layer and layer. So now I'm starting to add those shadows in those trees in the back. Now you can, I think, you know, a good tactic is to tackle either two ways. You paint the dark, the whole, the whole, this whole silhouette a darker shadow and add lights on top or vice versa. Now right now what I'm going to try is kind of painting the whole tree darker and then adding some lights on top because the value is really, uh, the value change is really subtle. Since it's really overcast this lighting, you're not gonna get a lot of contrast between the light areas. Not so much contrast from the light areas and the dark areas. So right now I just have the whole thing in dark. I'm gonna add some you know, nuances and color later. So I'm going to start painting the windows. And for the windows, I'm just mixing some um, burnt umber with a little bit um, of that gray I already have. Burnt umber and burnt sienna, just to get a mixture of those grays and those warms. You can see I'm mixing a little burnt sienna right now for some areas like the door. And for the darker parts of the windows, it's really just like a burnt umber with some sky blue to get those sort of um, simultaneous warms and cools. I'm switching to my round brush now to get in those light, smaller details. I can see I'm really not trying to nitpick, just really trying to imply. Imply that, you know, there are darker windows. 
I'm going back to the roof now because it's just really not working. You can, you can see the whole roof is sort of blending together. You know, I'm probably freaking out right now. Um, and I'm really just trying to adjust the value. So I realize that I have to make the side of that roof, the triangle area, lighter um, to really make it stand out and not blend into the background. And I can already see that I'm going to have to repaint the roof a little bit more. So right now I'm carving in um, the roof into the tree. So people usually paint the whole roof and then they paint the tree on top of it. But I sometimes I like to do the opposite. I like to think the opposite way and you know think negative space versus positive space. Just refining those windows and those doors a little bit more. I'm trying to shape the, the um, house even more with the background. So I can see I'm always cleaning my brush, drying it. And it's really important to have clean water and um, something to clean your brushes with. I'm still trying to fix the roof. Um, this is really not doing it for me right now. Just trying to add some pop now. That's I think that's a little bit too dark. So I'll have to readjust it later. I think I really want to get those nice, subtle, vibrant pops of purple. And sometimes if your previous color beneath hasn't dried, you will get slightly, you know, a muddy color that you don't want. So gouache does, try, does, gouache does, dry, does dry fast, but, you know, sometimes accidents happen. So for the shadow color, make some little brilliant green with ultramarine. And there's just a few flicks of really dark areas that I'm not really sure what it is in the painting either. There could be tree trunks, um, you know, but I'm just really trying to imply it because the reference I have isn't really the clearest reference, unfortunately. So I'm squinting a lot and trying to get the bigger picture. So now there's a little roof there I'm going to paint up there. Nice contrast against the darker foliage. So my house is kind of coming to shape now. It's not so much a blob anymore. But of course, there's still a lot to fix. So now I'm starting to carve a little bit, um, carve a little bit of the chimney out. and add a little bit more of that house moving. So the chimney, I'm really trying not to make it pop too much. So I'm never putting um, straight on white. Um, that will just pop way too much. It's always kind of an off white. And in this case, a white kind of with a linden green, a little bit of yellow to make it pop. I find that oftentimes when I just put straight on white, it's not going to look really glowing like you're not going to get that like light effect that you want versus when you mix white with a lot of times I use highlights with uh, mix it with white with linen green a little bit of yellow so again I'm always popping back and forth I'm going from the houses to the trees in the back to the pastures down below back to the houses back to the background um, where I see fit because for me it's always adjusting the value um, and then therefore adjusting color I'm just trying to figure out the balance between hard edge and soft edge in those doors and windows. And also kind of implying the edge there where there's a, a, a wall angle turn, but not forcefully, you know, being like there's an edge. So a lot of times to soften an edge, I'll use a little bit of water and I'll smudge it. So the trick is to dip your brush in water, dry it on the towel first, and then just smudge it a little bit. And I'll be demonstrating this, this more later. So I'm just kind of adding these nice pops of, um, of bush area. Um, and I'm mixing brilliant green with a little bit of linden green. So I really want it to contrast against the more, more muted gray, more muted greens. Now see, now I'm trying to lighten up this, the roof even more because I realized it's dried. So I'm mixing sky blue, alizarin crimson, and a lot of white. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre just to tone down the purple because yellow and purple are kind of near complements. 
I'm just trying to define the edges a little bit more, but not overdoing it. With that, I'm trying to use my round brush. Now I'm going to jump to this house because I guess I'm bored of that house. Probably by now I'm like, ah, oh, screw it, I'll go back to it. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go back to this house now because I want to pop some of those light areas and make it a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'm just mixing um, some burnt sienna white and a little bit of the purple I mixed before from the other group. Um, because they're kind of complements, you know, like purple and oranges and, and yellows. So really just to get that more muted kind of brown. So now you can see it mix a little bit of the green, the burnt sienna, just to get all those nice variant, variances in the color. Switch back to my flat brush, I'm using the corner of the flat brush to get the edges as well as the fat side. So I can see now I'm sort of smudging some edges when some edges are too hard. I think the green I have there is a little bit too strong. Just implying some detail there. Again, going back to the background to shape it a little bit more. So for this shadow color, I'm mixing some ultramarine and burnt umber and burnt sienna. That's um, kind of my favorite combination to mix shadows to get those warms and cools at the same time. And I'm not using too much water so I can get that really cool gradient effect, straight striated gradient effect. And I also talk about this in my foundation art tutorials. You can see I'm going to go back and lighten the background because I desperately see it needs some light. There's not enough depth, I think. So with that, I'm just mixing white, a little bit of brilliant green, and sky blue to get that really nice sort of misty teal kind of look. It's a little bit watery for me right now. I, I don't like that too much. Hopefully, we'll, I'll probably go back on it later thicken it up a little bit more. But as you can see, I'm mixing a lot of white, a little bit of sky blue, and brilliant green. I'm just implying that mist a little bit more. And you know what? This is probably still going to dry darker too. So probably going to have to lighten it up again. But now you can see the house pops a little bit more. The right house, the barn, pops a little bit more against the background because it's a little bit darker. All right, so I ran out of white, so I'm going to replenish my white. Very, very important. Recommend getting the 37 millimeter tube. Two of those or more of those, just so you have an ample supply. I'm just going back and sort of softening, trying to soften up the edge of that chimney a little bit. Um, kind of make it blend into the background. And I'm trying to do that by mixing the, val the color of the background into the chimney. We'll see how that goes. So for the background and for these kind of variants in the trees, uh, I love mixing um, raw sienna. I would usually use a yellow ochre, but at this actually for this video, I ran out of yellow ochre. So I'm using raw sienna, brilliant green, white, and a little bit of lizard and crimson, again, to mix those compliments in. Sometimes even a little bit of brilliant violet. I'm just, I'm sorry, I know the corner there is a little bit cut off and it looks a little bit dark. Um, and I'm kind of trying to get those slight purples in, into the shadow of those trees. You know, not everything has to be green. I'm getting some nice, some nice variants in. So I'm zoom in a little bit there. 
you can't really see color. And I'm going to go back and add um, even more darks in the foliage. Just to imply those tree trunks and branches. And again, I'm mixing just ultramarine and burnt umber. I never ever use black in my palette because I, I think it's just so boring. I don't think you really ever see black. It's just my opinion. All right, so I tried to make the chimney darker, but I think that's way too much. I'm going to have to soften that edge. So by doing that, I'm dipping my brush in a little bit of water, dabbing it on the towel, and then smudging it. You can see here, I'm constantly just slowly and patiently smudging it, wiping, smudging it, wiping. Defining the edge a little bit, but mixing the background color. Phew. Okay, maybe save that one a little bit. <laughs> and there's all these subtle little dark uh, dabs of shadow that can really bring out the house and imply, you know, that's where the roof ends, um, etc, etc. So I'm really just trying to apply that with a round brush because you can really get these nice dabs of um, just hints of color, where it otherwise might be really hard to do with the flat brush. So you can see just really um, hints of shadow here and there, and we can really define the house a lot more. So I'm just going back and lightening the sky a little bit. I'm using a lot of white and some sky blue, lightening up the side there with a lot of white and some sky blue. A little bit of brilliant violet. I, I really like brilliant violet. Um, uh, it might be a little bit too vibrant sometimes, but I love mixing it with greens for foliage. Um, it's kind of a, a, a cool trick that I like to do. Um, I also have started using Spectrum Purple too, or Spectrum Violet, but I don't have that with me right now, so not in this tutorial. Something I recommend you go get, the color. I'm trying to lighten up the roof even more. And I can see I keep adjusting the value of my roof because that side needs to be a little bit lighter than the front side of the roof. So it's just constantly adjusting. Lots and lots of white. I just really wish I showed more of the undertone of the painting for the roof of that left house. It would have looked so much nicer, but oh well, you know, you learn from your mistakes. So I'm just going to go now and just, just adding a little bit some darker areas in the windows, just a dab. You really want to be careful about this because when it's too dark, it looks too garish and too forced. When it's too light, then, you know, it doesn't look really real. So it's really that kind of fine tune of the shadows right underneath the, sh the, the roof um, for the windows. Um, not keeping it too bold. Now I'm going to start to um, add a little bit of complexity in the ground. So I know in the original paint there's a lot of texture and it's really light on the bottom. I don't feel like I have to paint over the whole canvas here. I just want to do a few confident strokes. So I'm mixing a lot of white with linden green, also some raw sienna to get that yellowish green. And I'm just dabbing in areas. Now my brush is very dry right now, okay? I don't have a lot of water because that's how you get your texture with little water and more paint. So I'm mixing thicker at this point, really not afraid to pile that paint. And I'm also simultaneously doing that with the darker areas. So I'm loosely gesturing in the darker areas. I'm using the corner of my brush as well as the flat side of my brush. And for those shadow areas, you know, I'm using a mixture of ultramarine and um, a little bit of brilliant purple, a little bit of red, lizard and crimson. You know, I'm not just mixing, oh, and viridian too, of course. I'm not just mixing like green with black, you know, I never do that. I always want to get these interesting color relationships and interesting color variations. So I'm going to start painting the sheep, and I'm trying to boldly use the flat brush, which I think I might regret. I might have to switch the round brush. Yep, switch the round brush. Um, and again with the sheep, I am not trying to focus on detail. One, because I really can't see in the reference much. 
I just want to imply that there is shape. So I'm using a lot of white and you know a little bit of purple, mixing that purple I made, sky blue and brilliant violet, and just kind of dabbing it, kind of getting the shape of the sheep. Now how to imply that they're sitting or that they're standing on the ground is I'm gonna start adding a little bit of shadow underneath those blobs. I'm just kind of trying to imply a head, you know. Your, your eye doesn't need so much detail to tell it what it is, you know. You can look at something and you can fill in the gap. So I'm just trying to add a little bit of shadow. As you can see, I'm, I took out that color a little bit by smudging it with water and um, you know, using water to erase. I'm just trying to add a little bit of shadow. You can see I'm using the tip of my round brush, so it's really good for that to get those kind of finer details. Detail, quote unquote, really not painting any detail. I'm going to go back and add some lighter areas. So now I'm just still carving into the tree. I'm making the shape of the tree more interesting by carving into the tree and not vice versa. So you can see with the round brush, I'm doing these quick flicks. You know, I'm not molding over it again. I'm doing these quick strokes to get that really nice texture at the end of my brush stroke. At the end of this painting, I'm gonna zoom up to the painting so you can see the brush strokes in more detail. Um, but I'm really, really trying to still capture the gesture of that giant tree behind the, the white house. So I'm just trying to add a little bit more of those lights in the ground. I'm adding a little bit of raw sienna, I'm running out. I'm mixing raw sienna, brilliant green, and lots of white, a little bit of red, of course, a compliment to, to dull down the vibrance a little bit. You can see I'm just brushing over, not so thick, not super thick. I'm really just brushing over a thin layer, mixing lots and lots of white, adding hints of yellow here and there. So it's really light, you can barely see. You can almost see the paint go away the moment I put it on the canvas, but it does make a slight difference. I'm lightening up the sky a little bit more now. You know, I'm seeing that there's not so much depth going on. So I'm trying to lighten up even more by mixing, keeping a little bit of that yellow, taking some sky blue and a lot of white. You know, again, they're kind of near complements. Blue and orange are complements. So I want to mix that kind of grayish tone. Now I realize I need to add some dark areas. So now I'm really using kind of a dry brush technique. You can see I'm really just mix, dabbing my brush into the palette and I'm not using so much water. Uh, it's really just the towel and the paint. Just implying some shadow here and there. Again, I'm suggesting detail and I am uh, not overcompensating it, if that makes sense. Using a little yellow ochre and ultramarine to get that darker green. Again, you can mix your greens like that with yellow and blue. So you can see you're starting to get I'm starting to get some complexity in the ground, and it's it's building up that thickness, and it looks a little bit more detailed than before. But I'm really not really painting detail. Again, I'm just implying it. So I want to lighten up some areas uh, near the house. I know there's some nice fresher greens there. So I'm gonna try to lighten that up there. Like that, I'm mixing a little brilliant green, raw sienna. And uh, just, just adding just strokes, confident strokes here and there to get that fresher green.
Now, I really want to try not to overwork this because I think there's if you do this too much, you overwork your strokes, it will reach a point where it just looks overworked and doesn't look beautiful. So I really don't want to reach that point. Maybe I already have. I don't know. But um, it looks better in person. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to add that, you know, just some darker areas there. Mixing some ultramarine with brilliant violet. Some viridian with brilliant violet. Sorry. Just sweeping it across. So I think viridian with brilliant violet is a really nice combination. Really to get those violets and those foliage is something that a lot of people tend to miss. And they tend to just have lots of different shades of green. When you add that extra element of... Um, a slightly warmer color, you know, it really makes the foliage pop even more. I'm just adding on even thicker, thicker strokes in the bottom. Now you can get these really nice um, textural strokes with really using less water. So again, the key is less water if you want to get more texture. and a lot, a lot of white. I apologize that you kind of have to tilt your head right now. I know I'm like tilting my head too while narrating this. <laughs> but hopefully, I mean, you can still see the whole painting okay. Um, just gonna add some, add the impression of, you know, grass peeking out. And I do that with the flat side of my brush and very little water. And again, um, I'm, not, I'm focusing really on the movement of the painting. That's something um, I really want you to remember when you're painting anything, whether you're doing a study or painting from life. Um, really, um, really analyze the movement, the, you know, the gesture. Capture that in your brush strokes. You don't want to be painting up and down vertically when you really feel the moment is slanted and horizontal. You know, it just won't, you know, the, the, the viewer won't, view, won't feel it. And that's really, really important. So your brush stroke should really... Um, capture the direction of the original painting. So, you know, for the field, I'm never going to do up and down strokes because that would just totally mess up the movement. So that's something to keep in mind. Getting a little bit of green on the side there. And just to imply some foliage. So. And again, see, now I'm lightening up the sky even more, and I'm using a really dry brush. Um, so at this point, you know, really, if I use water, it's just not going to lighten up. It's just going to blend right into my previous color. So as you paint, um, continue the painting, you want to, you know, use less and less water. But I'm kind of molding it into my previous color. And if you want your strokes, if you think your strokes are too hard and it's too textural, all you have to do is dab your brush in a little bit of water, dry it off a little bit on a towel, and just smudge it. First of all, make sure your brush is clean. Okay, if you want to do the smudging effect, make sure your brush is clean so you're not smudging previous color into your current, current brush stroke. So I'm just going to go back and fix the sheep a little bit. I'm going to try to make them look a little bit more like sheep. Give them a head, maybe. Uh, maybe some highlights a little bit. I'm kind of really just making it up at this point because I'm really not sure the reference, um, you know, it doesn't really look like a sheep down there, so I'm going to try to fix that. But really think, um, you know, in times like this where you're not sure how to capture, think in simple shapes. You know, kind of think how the uh, overall shape of a sheep would look like, an overall shape of a tree would look like. Think from simple to complex and not the other way around. Guarantee with simple shapes, your painting will read a lot better than a lot of complex strokes that don't shape anything, don't form anything. I 
I'm just going to add um, hints of the house peeking out behind the foliage there. And uh, maybe just smudge the background there a little bit. You could probably desaturate it even more. So at this point, I'm really just um, kind of just honing in on some little details here and there. And again, this is a study, so it's not going to look perfect. It's not going to look the same, totally the same as a study, but it's kind of my interpretation of the painting um, and how I perceive the colors. You know, you can look at something and, you know, the way you perceive it, it could be slightly different from the original painting itself. I'm just using the round brush to kind of tighten up the edges there. And for the barn, I, I, I know I used a little bit of cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and white. You know, to really get that vibrancy. Now I realize I need to fix that, you know, that top part, the little house top part there. It doesn't stick up as much in the original painting, but I kind of screwed it up. And I can see I'm just taking a really dry brush and just trying to drag down that paint a little bit with a shadow color. Really drying down my brush and just kind of smudging the paint. So now I'm doing some upper movement. I know before I said follow the gesture theme, but that's to imply some of the grass, you know, the, the little thickets, I guess. I don't know what you would call them. Um, and I'm just fine tuning those windows a little bit, just to make them a little bit darker. Just kind of redefining that edge just a little bit, but not too much again. Or it'll just look a little fake. So I'm still trying to add those pops of orange in the roof there. I'm trying really desperately. You can see I'm mixing on my towel, trying to get that um, cadmium yellow and white. But really, um, you know, at this point, it's a little, sometimes it's a little bit hard to get that vibrancy with gouache when you've painted over so much. So at this, at this point, it's a little bit harder. But I did get a little bit of those pops of orange, so I tried. switching out my towel because it's really important to have a clean towel. You're not, you don't want to be wiping your brush on previous color. You're just going to wipe back dirty color onto your painting. Just smudging the edge a little bit there. Not all the edges have to be hard. When you do paintings like this, I want you to focus on hard and soft edges. So I want to zoom up now on this painting so you can see the brush strokes and the, really the color variation that you probably couldn't see from far away. As you can see, I really painted thick because I really wanted to catch that gritty texture of the original painting. Now here's the finished painting. I touched it up a little bit afterwards. Um, I added some hints of holes on the right hand side, smudged and edged a little bit more, lightened the left top corner to add a little bit of sky. And I lightened up the barn, the red barn, because the value was a little bit off. But overall, I wanted to keep that looseness. And here on the bottom right corner, you can see the original and compare it to mine. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please follow me on Gumroad at Gumroad Tiffany Mang Art. I have an Instagram handle and a Facebook. Um, and I plan on making more tutorials, kind of studies with, on different artists, different master artists, and also different subject matters, such as oceans, trees, you name it. So yeah, stay tuned for more tutorials and hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching and see you next time.